What are the um, uh, emotional, psychological, ethical expressions of really kind of genuinely long-term good psychedelic people? What is the long-term ethical expression of the good of psychedelic people? Yeah. Well, it's some kind of it's some kind of effort to separate shit from Shinola. In other words, it's uh, some kind of effort to uh, uh, distill uh, a, rat a a truth from the blooming, buzzing confusion of the universe. So it's a branch of. I don't know what you would say, cognitive science or something like that. It's a, an effort to define the human essence away from its content or something like that. And you see what I mean? Tell, explain a little more. Well, it's a, it's a branch of psychology. It's a self-study in psychology. So anybody who's taking psychedelics is, I assume, trying to present a truer image of themselves to other people and the world through this process of um, distillation of understanding. And that's where the connection to alchemy and all that comes in. This distillation of essence away from the dross confusion and Gnostic muck of the world is a kind of uh, like a Jungian individuation process or something like that. And that, and that manifests in the, in the call even in normal life to present it yourself, articulate yourself, oneself differently. I think so, yeah. And causes people to be willing to take chances, uh, both pharmacological and sociological, by being involved in something so marginal, you know. Because in the, in the big civilizations, this kind of shamanic stuff is definitely very marginal. Most people just don't do it. Do you feel that that characterizes the overall or in some significant way the kind of people that you've met for the last... It depends on how often they do it. You know, some people are doing it because their friends are doing it. Some people are doing it because some... I don't know, they're <coughs> feeling some kind of social pressure. But the people who are really called to do it are rare. <clears throat> you know, the people who say, well, I get loaded ten times a year on high-dose psychedelics or six times a year. That's a lot. I mean, that means yeah. your lifestyle is pretty much defined by, by all that hmm. stuff. Yeah, I would love to know what the real numbers are. How many people a year get really loaded once you get the Amazon Indians out you know, the Mexicans out, and a few of these people out. It's hard to even know how you begin to make an estimate, you know. Be, um, be, before your sickness, did how often did you do lar large journeys? Mm, less and less often. I mean, I noticed that through the 90s, that, uh, but maybe four or five times a year get... But... I always felt never enough, you know, never enough. So do you have the sense that we, that the tripping you on some level are getting, uh, getting something done? That the tripping something being, is getting something yes, done? Yes, that, that there's something being worked out, like continuously and progressively? Yeah, I assume that basically the download called history meaning all the technology, social innovation, philosophy, art, fashion, architecture, is some kind of dialogue with this... Well, higher mind, I'm not entirely comfortable with that, but this higher mind that 
keeps showing these different facets through the mist. And, I mean, that science and, and psychedelic and all this is a dialogue with the mathematical deep structure of nature. And that somehow as you get that out, there's this sense of progress, more than a sense of progress, progress. And I don't... And, uh, you know, in terms of what is it all leading toward or what it's about, it, it must be something about, like, the spiritualization of matter. That matter is evolving toward quintessence or essence or something like that. And, you know, we're the startled witnesses to this thing because we're part of this stuff that I called emergent properties or, you know, the, the uh, side effects, you could almost say, of the universal emergence of matter into spirit. Because that's what biology is. I mean, I think biology is uh, the quantum mechanical uh, magnification of uncertainty into macrophysical space, so that essentially we're chemical systems that, by some means yet to be understood, amplify quantum mechanical uncertainty into dimensions such as we see and that permits um, these emergent properties and systems and morphologies to to show themselves and and that's the trick or that's the trick explained on one level you know it's funny when, when in your raps you you stay away from uh, what do a lot, to a lot of people would be would consider spirituality in a in a way like uh, the way that somebody would present their you know Jewish spirituality or a kind of Buddhist practice or what, whatever you don't talk in, in fact often you sort of like you slag the the guru model and you kind of separate yourself from that and you really have a kind of like you've maintained the sort of I don't know how, I don't want to Quite characterize it right now, but um, and yet at, at points, obviously, you're, you are motivated by something that, in your own language, you might you would call spiritual. Well, what what is what comes up around that word? I guess I believe I'm some form of progressive history. That history is progressive. So then, the story of evolution and biology and human culture and all this is assumed to be a story with a happy ending. So in a way this belief in telos, which is not philosophically sanctioned, or, or this eschatological vein in my personality is what gives it a spiritual impulse. But it's the idea that time, it's an alchemical idea actually, it's the idea that time will perfect matter. And uh, uh, I think it probably will perfect matter. What do you think about, do you think that like postmodern spirituality is a sort of legitimate term or, or project? You mean t to believe or involve yourself in, or uh, believe? It's not really about belief. I, I, I mean that whatever the kind. I mean, there's a lot of people now who are developing a relationship with all different kinds of spiritual practice, and they're not really doing it even in the way that people did in the '70s, where there was so many, so much more true believing. It's, it's a different kind of relationship. It's probably on a short spin, a short cycle that a lot of empiricists are taking up Dzogchen mm -hmm. and that how long can that go on? Uh, so then there'll be a lot of revisionism and rethinking and recasting of all this, which is the very best thing for it. Yes, it is. So were you ever very interested in meditation or yoga? 
Oh, when I was in India, and immediately before I went to India, when I was in the Seychelles the first time <coughs> I, I was, because when I was in Mombasa, Kenya, I came upon this place called the... I can't remember. Anyway, it was a library that was basically having a bargain sale in theosophical literature. So I took about 50 kilos of, uh, of uh, yogic uh, Arthur Avalon theosophical literature with me to the Seychelles. And that was what I read and worked through when I was out there.